Hey everybody, Bill Faith here from Build Short-Term Rental Wealth. Welcome to Super Host Sunday. Um, I'm excited uh, that you guys are here. Um, hopefully this all works well. Uh, I see that we've got, yeah, we've got about 10 of you in already. First things first, please say hello. Let me know where you're from. Um, I just, I love talking to you guys. And if you have any questions, drop a comment down below. Um, first time we've done this like this, usually I broadcast these live into the Facebook group um, all of the time, but, uh, kind of just want to do, use this for, uh, on the YouTube channel today. And then, uh, in the upcoming weeks, I'll be traveling a little bit. I've got mastermind meeting plus the Montana retreat back to back. Um, I don't like recording these well in advance cause I want them to be topical. So those will pro most likely be, um, voice casts that I will do, uh, that I'll send to Chris. And then we'll deliver those to you via, uh, the text message. Hey, Tracy and Marshall from North Dallas, Jeffrey from Florida, the last Picasso from Kentucky is in the house. Uh, Lost Together Stays from Tampa, Evan, my main man from Minnesota, uh, John from Miami, Crystal from Montana. Crystal, where are you at in Montana? Uh, Paige, hey Paige from the Poconos, uh, Melbourne, Tropical Oasis in Phoenix, Brian from Charlotte. What's up, Nader? How are you, buddy? Holding down those uh, craps tables, I hope. Uh, Tawny from North Carolina, uh, RSV props from, we got Michigan in the house. We got, um, you know, Shannon from Washington, Joe, my man from St. Louis, Mr. Accelerator, um, Crystal from Bill Billings. Awesome. I love it. Bob, thanks for joining us, Bob. Bob Bob's probably going to win the award, Bob Phillips, from uh, being the farthest away. Bob is in Germany uh, right now, so. Um, Elizabeth from Vermont, Amanda from, we got Colorado, Philly, the Poconos, uh, Andrew Boer, hopefully I said that correctly. Um, I've been corrected on that because I'm not really good at enunciating names. Uh, Tony from Nashville, dude, you should have just came down and sat in live with me down here in Brentwood. Um, Jupiter, Florida, uh, Houston, uh, that is Brett and Melissa. Awesome. Thank you guys. So the purpose of today um, is just to share with you. I know there's a lot of people that believe interest rates are high. Uh, we can't invest right now. The world's going to end this summer. Um, and I just want to give you some pers from some perspective. I am always in buying mode. And if I have capital to deploy, um, I am always looking for the best place to deploy my cash that will give me the best cash flow or the best cash on cash return. And that that could be in as an angel investor, it could be starting my own business, it could be in short term rentals, it could be in multifamily, it can be anywhere. The only place it doesn't go is in the stock market unless I'm buying a share of Berkshire Hathaway. I'm just very, very conservative. A lot of you might think that I'm extremely aggressive and that I have $50 million in cash and that's not the case. I'm just like you. I've had to work my ass off to get to the point of where I'm at today and I don't have unlimited you know, swaths of cash, you know, sitting in my wine cellar. I do have a wine cellar. I do spend money on wine, but I just don't have the ability to go buy whatever I want when I want. So it has to be right. And I just made a, a lifestyle asset purchase in seven weeks ago in Montana. So I honestly really wasn't in buying mode right now, but even though I'm not in buying mode, I'm still practicing. Uh, and what that means is, is that every day I'm looking at properties, I'm evaluating properties, whether they're for myself or whether somebody's hired me, uh, you know, to do that for them, but I'm still looking and I'm looking in all of these different markets. Um, well, this one kind of fell into my lap. Uh, Tony Boer from up in Louisville, her husband, uh, Andrew, they posted this onto their Facebook page. Uh, I saw it. I think it had been on the market for like two days, maybe the day after. Um, and I really didn't have a keen interest. It wasn't the, the bourbon trail, the Kentucky area. It's definitely on my radar, uh, but it was not the number one place that I would, I would be looking to invest. The, and here's what attracted me to this. And this is where people go wrong. The first mistake I think people make is they look at market. And so like, hopefully all of you, I use STR insights to identify the market. And then I look at it by bedroom count inside the market. And then I break it down to a sub market. I think most people stop at just looking at the market. Wow. And that's what everybody asks on social media. 
I'm going to go into Broken Bow. I'm going to go into G- uh, Gulf Shores. That's where, and, and it's just going to work. It's not. It, it has to come down to the submarket, and then it has to come down to the actual property. And the thing that attracted me to this property was the property. Um, I do not believe it is the best location in the entire Bourbon Trail. Um, I know for a fact that it is not. What I do know is this canvas is large, and there is a lot of structure there that I can add a tremendous amount of value to. So the first call that I made is uh, to Kenny Bedwell at STR Insights, you know, my co-host on the STR Nomics podcast. And I said, hey, buddy, um, I'm driving. Are you available to do like three minutes? Can you look at some comps on this property? Uh, and he ran some comps and he said 145 grand just off the cuff. And I'm like, okay, not what I want to do. But I know in my portfolio, I outperform uh, the 90th percentile by 50%. My mastermind members have coined the mastermind 30, the 30% markup as a whole, they do it at 30%. So I'm looking at 200 grand, essentially, if I can beat that 145 by 50%, that's actually over $200,000. So the starting point is, okay, if I, if Kenny tells me 145, my historicals tell me, let's just call it 200, then I'm going to start at like 150 to 165. Then I'm going to run like a 185 to 195. And I'm going to run like a 210 to 215 performa. And this works on all of them. I think the reality for me is with what I'm going to, I'm going to show you the listing here in a second. Um, I'm going to tell you exactly what I paid for it. uh, And I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do to the property to take it from that 140 all the way up to potentially, I'm, I'm looking at 200 to $210,000, I think will be reality, but that's not what I'm banking on. So when I go to Brian Buckholt, uh, or if I was trying to qualify for a DSCR product, um, that's not what I would deliver in my performa. I would deliver less than that. Um, because one, they're probably not gonna believe that's realistic and it probably needs to be more in line with their DNA, uh, which is what they would be utilizing to look at uh, this revenue. So the reality is, is let's just call it 150, 175, 200 for three performas. I would probably pitch the $175,000 performa uh, because that's much more in line like with the mastermind markup of 30%. Um, But I can't just get there with any old house. And as I've been preaching since I started uh, this business, Build Short-Term Rental Wealth, is that we have to buy unique properties. And for me, I want to look at the palette and, and visualize and you know, and, and Tony will, will tell you this. And I didn't walk into the house. The house was the last thing that I looked at on this property. It's kind of like when I went to Montana with my wife and she took a picture of me and posted it here. And, you know, it was just me staring out the window. I bought, I didn't buy the house. I bought the river. I bought the view. I bought the proximity to the water. I bought the lake on the other side of the river. I bought the backyard. I bought the size of the lot. I bought all that stuff. I, di- I didn't even go up to the second floor of the house. That's the thing that is important that I want you to understand. I'm looking for the marketability. And that one, that was really about how me and her are gonna use that in our retirement plan. This strictly investment. I have no desire to hang out in Kentucky. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but everything they have, I've got right here, um, you know, closer to what I need. I don't drink bourbon. I don't play golf anymore. Um, There's really no personal attraction outside of uh, the water features that it has. Uh, but I'm going to throw in some of the things that I know how to do, um, you know, with a property and that I've done in the past that I know will be attractive as I level up this property. Um, Tony, you're hundred percent correct. That's one, that's one of the other attractions. The bourbon trail, Kentucky is a year round market, very similar to Nashville where I live. Um, and this property is about 8.2 miles outside of Bardstown, Kentucky which is the Kentucky or the bourbon capital of the world. So that's great from a marketing standpoint. It's great from a location standpoint. Um, but I don't really care about bourbon. The other thing is there's no hotels. Uh, there's literally like an inn in Bardstown. There's right inside of that town. There is no motel six. There's no holiday Inn. there's no comfort in. Um, and it's a small market for short term rentals. Does that mean to me that people are not going there. It's not going to be a high demand location, like going into the Smokies or like going into Gulf Shores. If I was on the outskirts of Louisville, 
I would have much more demand. Or if I had a commercial property inside of Louisville, I would have much, much more demand. But once you see what I'm going to do to the property and the vision and what it has, I think you'll really understand uh, why I'm buying this property. And so let me show you my screen here. <clears throat> and if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to post questions into, uh, into the comments. I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer any questions that you guys have. <clears throat> All right, so you guys may have uh, seen this property uh, when Tony shared it onto her, uh, her Facebook page. Um, and you can see it was listed at $799. We're under contract at $750. Um, and that also includes uh, some furniture that I'm under contract on. Um, as I said, again, the, the forecasted revenue is going to be right around $175 is what I would take to the bank. Realistically, I think I will do somewhere between $195 to $205 to be able to get that type of revenue uh, on a $750,000 investment is challenging to, uh, to do. Now, my interest rate will be under 7% uh, going with Brian Buckholt at Huntington Financial. Not worried about that. So this is a six bedroom, four bath, 3,500 square feet, 3,491 to be exact. I think it's 6.88 acres. Probably says that on here somewhere. Basically seven acres. Oh, there we go. Yep. 6.86 acres, $229 a foot. Um, so pretty easy. Built in 2004. I love homes that are built in 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. They're typically what we call golden girls, but they all, at least I've had very good luck to where they all seem to be built very, very well. Uh, we'll find out hopefully this week or next week. Um, I'll get with Tony and we'll start the inspection uh, process immediately. Uh, this just kind of bodes well for photos, just FYI. I mean, golden hour, obviously some Photoshopping done here, but you all should have these not to get off topic in your own listings. Um, and many do not. Unfortunately, many will just literally use um, this image. And if you look at the difference, this is what you need to have on your listing. And this is what you don't want to have on your listing. Just that little Photoshopping changes everything for you guys. So here's the first look of why I bought this house. So this is the driveway coming in. <coughs> um, this is the property line right here. And it runs way back over here to the left. This is about a three acre pasture. Um, that I personally will not use. Uh, but there's enough room to get two to three horse trailers in here. That is a big deal in this market, specifically for horses. And I'm not saying for Kentucky Derby or Keeneland, but if you have horse families that are coming for races or on the weekends, there's a place for them to be able to turn around, which is not always accessible. Um, and then they can easily get their horses into the pasture uh, if they need be. There is a pool. The owners of the, the property actually are the pool builders. Uh, there is a brand new hot tub. There's the old hot tub uh, right there. So having a pool, obviously a bonus. Um, it is a liner pool. That is something that we all need to be uh, aware of. It is not a gunite pool. It is not a, um, a fiberglass pool. I have both. Uh, so I, am, I was a little bit concerned about the liner. They're going to replace the liner. That was part of the negotiation. Thank you, Tony. Um, you know, for getting this done. Um, and then you see these out parcels. So that's the next reason. So when I pulled up, Tony said, you want to go in the house? Nope. I want to go over here and look at these first. Andrew said, let's go look at this one. So what you see right here is 4,800, I think it's 46 or 4,800 square feet. This is where, uh, he has, um, yeah, Tom, you can come and bring your horses here. I'm not getting into the horse business. I'll live vicariously through you, my friend. Uh, th this is where he has his vintage cars and his workshop and that type of stuff. Um, I'll show you the inside in a second. So what do people do in Kentucky? Uh, why would they come here? Number one is to, to taste and, and go to the bourbon trail. Uh, they're also coming to play golf. A lot of golf courses around here. They're coming for horses. Uh, mainly guys, when they're drinking bourbon or drinking wine, what do they like to do if they're on a guy's trip to play golf or go to the races, go to Keeneland, do whatever? They, a lot of them like to smoke cigars. Well, Tom, you'll appreciate this too. This right here is like an old school hanger. It's rounded. It's a two car garage, a little bit of paint. Give my wife probably 5,000, 6,000 bucks. And that's going to become the bourbon tasting and smoking room. So literally you can smoke till you're, you know, life's content, you know, as many cigars as you want. And I'm sure in the state of Kentucky, there's people that smoke weed. I don't like that in my house. They can go smoke all that crap they want in that room right there. And that will be the smoking and tasting room. This will be the, the ultra man cave right here. 
Um, this is a, about a 25 foot wide burn pit that will become a fire pit, uh, that will have probably six by sixes all the way around it with string lighting. Uh, we'll make it look really nice. We'll put some pavers down around it, probably have a trail going back over here. Um, and I'll get into some more of the things that are here, but hopefully you're starting to see the vision in the show. Um, Anthony, Bill, do you base your Airbnb amenity checklist off the market you're in? Uh, will you be buying a mosquito net, high chair? Uh, so that's a great question, Anthony. So Anthony is asking, Bill, do you base your Airbnb amenity checklist off of the market you're in? Will you be buying a mosquito net, high chair, et cetera, for a Kentucky pop, uh, property? Anthony, so I think those are all, uh, you know, givens that we need to have. I'll have the, the lobster pot. I'll have the mosquito nets. I'll have the um, you know, the, the canopy thingy that you have to have outside, all of those things, I will check those boxes, um, because I will have storage here. And that's a big thing. I don't, I can't check every one of those boxes down at the beach. Uh, sometimes at smaller properties and urban areas, you can't check all of those boxes. So I will go in order based on demand. And that does vary market to market. You know, as an example, Kenny and I talk about this all the time on the STRnomics podcast, the, the high, the top amenities, you know, don't render across the board. I, I love using Fort Morgan as an example, because I'm the guy that has the, the three, two beachfront, uh, property. And I made it pet friendly because that's the only pet friendly beach in the state of Alabama, orange beach, uh, you know, Gulf shores, not pet friendly, but what we found is pet friendly doesn't move the needle. Um, and, but what does is kayaks. So I've actually adding kayaks, uh, to that property. So there's a lot of things that, you know, become super uh, important that we look at, but I will make a golf course here and I will add a putting green here. And there's a lot of things that I'm going to show you as I kind of go through this. Um, and this is where the value add is. This is where I make all of my money. So here you can see the lake. The lake is stocked. Um, a good friend of mine, Bill Carmen, uh, is building a property here in Nashville. I co-host a property for him two doors down from me and one that I own in Gulf Shores. He's building a lake. He's got Luke Bryan's lake guy uh, helping him. I will have Luke Bryan's lake guy up here to aerate it, stock it. We will get some monster three to five pound bass uh, inside of this lake, and that will be an attraction, and we'll market it. And I will go in there, and I will catch them, and I will hold them, and they will go into the listing. The other thing is we'll have kayaks. We'll have a, a paddle boat. We'll have sups. We'll have all those things, and I'll probably stage them here on the dock. The cool thing about the back of this this soon-to-be ginormous, you know, Tim Allen-style man cave is it's about 25 yards to walk down to the lake. The other thing that I'm going to do is literally right around where this trampoline is, we'll clean up some of this grass and get this to look really nice. But right outside the back door here, it's about 75 to 80 yards to the water there. So this is absolutely perfect to go right over here to make a, a putting green, an artificial turf putting green. And you have a tee box here and that's about a 75 yard shot. And then we'll have another one. They'll go over the water right, right back here. And then one back down to this area and one back here. So like a three to a four hole golf course, um, that I've already talked to a friend of mine here in Nashville. I should be able to get that done for probably about 10 to 15,000 bucks. And I mean, to make it nice, like legitimate putting greens that are about 20 feet, uh, you know, roughly 20 by 20 have a, a tee box area down here, put up some signs, you know, hole number one, hole number two, hole number three, hole number four, um, and make it legit. Nobody has that. So what I want to do with this property, because it is in the county, is I'm going to make this a destination within itself. Um, so I'm going to build the fire pit. I'm going to do the kind, I'm going to do all that type of stuff. I'm going to make this a bass fishing Mecca. I will stock it with probably three. I'll probably put like 50 to hundred. Um, you know, three, two to three pound ba bass in there. We'll put in an aerator and a feeder and we'll put in uh, some coverage around there. I can get all of that done for about 10 grand. So some of those things, there's easy things that I'm thinking about for, to be attractive. Um, let's see here. Let me go back and show you, they don't ha show you inside of the area. I mean, just look at how clean it is. Um, it's very nice. It's very clean. It's in really good shape. Um, you know, a, we'll probably call this Amos Lodge after our youngest daughter. We have Amos Ridge up in North Carolina. 
<clears throat> you can see this is not a, a rental. This is owned personally, so it's pretty cluttered. So that's also one of the things that's kind of hard to see through that for a lot of people if you're not a designer. I've, I've learned that trait uh, from my wife. Um, I was not ever able to see that previously. We also negotiated the full bedroom set in the master and three couches, which those things alone are probably going to save me between ten to 15000 bucks. Um, I'm just trying to get through the house real quick. I will rip this out. I will rip that out. Uh, and that's a cool thing about working with a, an agent like Tony uh, and Andrew is they have all these connections so they can hook me up with the contractors. They've got their tile guy, uh, get them on the schedule and they're going to be a tremendous help. Uh, and I, I wouldn't go in blind into a market like this. Remember, this was not on my uh, radar, but uh, standalone tub back there. Uh, we're down into the basement now, I think. That's got to come out. I'll tile that. That's about three to 4000 bucks. Uh, this is upstairs on the catwalk. And I'm trying to get to that big room. You can see the rooms are pretty large. Basement, we'll keep that couch. Basement's pretty large. And remember, it's 3,500 square feet um, across the board. I guess I missed it. Let's see. No, here we go. So that this is where the smoking room will be in the, in the bourbon tasting room. And then this is the inside of that large 4,800 square foot room that we were talking about. So long, he's got like a 60 inch, um, you know, television. I'm going to put three 75s on this wall. And then the wall behind here, I'm going to put three 75s. So I'll put six 75 inch televisions. I'll drop in probably uh, another that we're getting the couch that's in here, probably drop in three more couches, two to three more couches um, and a pool table. And then I love the Joomla outdoor, uh, like all wood um, ping pong table from uh, Wayfair. I've had great luck with that. I have it in North Carolina as well in my game room there that was a three-car garage. This is about twice the size of a three-car garage at like 4,000 plus uh, square feet. You can see it here. Um, I think uh, Andrew measured it and I think it was like 4,600 or 4,200 something. It was ridiculous. Uh, we will epoxy this, stain it, and epoxy it so it looks nice. Uh, my wife will come in, we'll drop in some barrel heads and stuff like that, make it look, you know, kind of dark and nice and, you know, make it look bourbonish, uh, if you will. And right outside that back door, uh, we'll probably put a secondary fire pit. So that way, if the guys are hanging out here in the game room, you know, they can just roll that up, put in a man door right here and walk out to their own private fire pit uh, back here right on the lake. And you can just see once again, the breadth of how large uh, this space is. So it's this space with the lake with that two car garage to turn that into the bourbon tasting room and the smoking room uh, with the pool and all the space to like be able to have plenty of room for kayaks and that type of stuff. And I'm, you know, put in some uh, cornhole, we'll probably do cornhole lanes and uh, like two horseshoe lanes and two cornhole lanes. Once again, we'll probably put up some six by sixes, put string lights around it, make it look amazing. So if you think about just like the $45 string lights from Costco, and putting in some six by sixes. I mean, that's something even I can do with a tape measure, a post hole digger, you know, a wheelbarrow and some quick creep. Um, you know, the electrical part, I could extension cord it out there. The great thing is we have power on this right here. Uh, so we can do that close. So I'm back of the house, fire pit, and then all the cornhole and the uh, horseshoe pit off to the side. Uh, Chuck Miner, a guy that I used to co-host his lodge for here. I still take care of his place down in Gulf Shores. He did something very similar as we conceptualize, conceptualize that idea at a lodge that he has here in Nashville, and it turned out fantastic. So I'll kind of replicate that um, as well. Uh, chicken coop gone. That's a chicken coop area there. That'll be gone. Um, and then this is the uh, floor plans inside the house. So that is pretty much it to kind of show you guys what I'm going to do and how I think. <clears throat> and I just want to reiterate that if this was just seven acres with a pool, I probably wouldn't buy the property. But because of the lake, there's actually a lagoon off to the left you might have seen. Because of the out parcels and the visualization of what I can turn this into and then dropping in the golf holes and just the, the, ability, the driveway to be able to get horse trailers, that's a whole nother draw. If that driveway's not there and... You know, I don't have the ability to put in golf holes. I might not purchase the property. So it's, as I talk about, it's the stacking. And I'm thinking about how am I going to market and what's going to drive value? What gives, what gives me the ability to convince somebody to stay 35 to 45 minutes from, from Louisville as opposed to 15 minutes from Louisville? 
What, how do I convince somebody that's going to, to uh, you know, mammoth caves to stay here with their family? Those are the things because marketing is all about positioning and that's how I'm looking at making my investments. This kind of checks all these boxes. I've got pasture and turnaround capability and parking for horses, <coughs> for horse trailers. I've got six bedrooms, four baths already. I've got a pool. I've got a hot tub. I've got two levels of, of decks and stuff that I can use. I've got seven acres. I've got the two out parcels for the bourbon and, and smoking room. I've got the major man cave. I might even put a bathroom and a bunk room in there. There's so much room. Um, I have I mean, I got the lake. I got the guy that can come in and turn that into an amazing bass fishing lake, even though it's already stocked, just make it even better. I've got everything that I need to really make this the destination that people are going to want to come to because I have to have them make decisions to want to stay here. If I don't believe that I have the ability to position for somebody to want to stay here, then I'm not going to pull the trigger and make that investment. And this one checked every box. Thank you, Tony. Uh, I really appreciate you working with me on this. Um, David, yes, there are. That would probably be a little bit different idea, a little bit different, um, you know, component to be able to go through. Um, but those are things that you always want to check. And I'll, and I will a hundred percent, I will physically go my wife and I, so I'll be asking Tony to see if she can schedule either Wednesday or uh, Friday for me and my wife to come up. My wife hasn't seen this yet. Um, and when I do come, then I will actually go into the County office, um, and meet with them personally and start that as part of my due diligence process. Um, how do you plan for, for maintenance of these unique features like the golf course, uh, putting green? Uh, you know, so I, it's not going to be a putting green. It'll be artificial turf. It will not be like a real putting green by any means. Uh, that's somebody that, you know, honestly, I'll lean on Tony who has the connections. Uh, hopefully the, the list between Tony, the listing agent, I'll get referrals. I'll vet them. Um, I'll, I, Tony's told me what it costs to get it mowed. I mean, the majority of everything you see from like along the driveway in and then the house back is all maintained and mode, I know what that costs. I mean, I can pay two to three times more within the budget uh, and have no problem uh, being able to knock that out. Have you already figured out uh, if insurance will cover all your amenities, just wondering what a quote from proper uh, would be for a property with that much going on? Uh, that's a great question, Anthony. So I have not spoken to proper yet. The only thing that I see uh, that proper would potentially have an issue with in this scenario is going to be sups and also what golf would be the biggest one and then sups and kayaks uh inside of the lake but typically uh with you know rules and addendums and disclosures and all that type of stuff i mean almost every property i have that has that type of stuff that property is insured or that proper is insured and have a really good relationship with them they did decline my montana house um and i know why they, de they decline and i know why they don't decline if i can't get it through proper i know i can get uh homeowners um, and then do a liability on top of it, which I would prefer not to do. Uh, but Tony already has introduced me to somebody that does STR insurance there locally as well. So there are options. There's, there's no questions. Um, is there a horse barn and how far from Lexington is this? <clears throat> um, I don't know how far it is from Lexington. I think it's about an hour, maybe 55 minutes. Uh, Tom, there is not a horse barn. Uh, it's just the pasture um, at this point. Um, heated pool. Yes, it is. Oh, that's Tony. It is heated. Also, is it instantly considered pet friendly because you're allowing horses, um, or allowing dogs? Um, I most likely will allow dogs in this property. Uh, this is not something that me and my wife, and we've already discussed it. We will not go in and put a hundred grand into interior design and put the highest end, uh, uh, finishes in here with couches and that type of stuff. This will be durable. It will be a lot of leather. Um, and those things are all considered that go into the design process. I have not discussed this with my wife yet, so I don't want to say yay or nay. Most likely this will be pet friendly, uh, for dogs, but I don't think allowing the horses would classify it as pet friendly. Maybe it would. Um, how do you suggest a first time STR buyer determine and design the value add strategy for a property like you just did? Get some advice, Tony. Um, I mean, I think that's that's the biggest thing that I can tell you when when I first started doing this. I mean, I, I didn't see, I mean, 
Chris will tell you, Chris that works for me will tell you that I have this ability to see things that most people don't when I'm looking and evaluating properties or businesses or starting a business or whatever. And I believe that 100%. Uh, but I can tell you, I, I wouldn't have known to do these types of things when I first started. A lot of that has to do with experience, but I've always been, always in every business that I've ever done, I'm looking for uh, the you something that will separate those those value add separators, right? The the value proposition that my competition doesn't have. So I think that probably comes naturally from just the business experience that I have. Um, but I would say that you 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 just look at things like this. Keep watching these types of things and and understand and have conversations with other hosts and investors because the the ones that are straight data or the ones that are just you know straight by like Air DNA or STR Insights. And if they can't see these things, then they're not going to be able to really do the value add. It's so much more than just interior design and murals. And that's kind of what a lot of people are trying to default to today. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's not just that stuff. It's about the stacking of value, right? And so what's happened with this, because there's so many options, I actually create this property for more buyer personas. You know, I will market to Tom Hausnick, whose family's into horses down in the Tampa area, and they probably come up to Lexington uh, a lot and Ocala and that type of stuff. I'll market to the horse families. I will market to the bourbon trail uh, guys. I will market to the golfers, right? I will market for large families to come. And, you know, it, even though the, the man cave is going to be geared towards middle-aged men and sports and uh, poker and, you know, pool tables and stuff like that, we'll make it to where it's family friendly. I'll throw some arcade games and some kids stuff in there as well. So I kind of want to trans transcend across all of those different buyer personas. So I think the only thing I can tell you, uh, you know, Tony, is just keep learning because I can tell you, I did not have this skill when I first started. Um, and these are what happened. Th th these are things that get really deep in conversations, like in, in our mastermind about how you do this stuff. So a lot of people would just buy this property sight unseen. I didn't make an offer until I was up there and I saw it. Um, because I don't think you guys quite understand the palette that's in front of this that I have to paint, um, unless you put your eyes on this. This is, and this is one of the reasons why I absolutely would never, the, let me say that I would absolutely never again buy a property sight unseen. My second property I ever invested into, I bought sight unseen. It was, it was the only investment, the only one I've ever lost money on. It was a bad investment with bad people, with bad advice, and I should have never made the investment. It's 100% my fault. And man, am I glad I got that out of the way early <clears throat> because it set the tone and the path for me to make much better decisions and follow my own system. So I will never, ever, ever, we're never, ever getting back together for you Swifties out there. Um, I will never, ever buy a property without putting my eyes on it. And honestly, if I go off of just the standard like 75th percentile, which is probably where most of you live uh, in your revenue uh, generation and, you know, an $800,000 price point and I don't go and see it, it's still a good deal, but it's not exceptional because I'd probably, you'll probably do 140,000, 150,000. But when I see the value add and I'm willing to put 15, let's say 20,000 into that big building, right? And another 10, you know, into... Uh, the the two bedroom building and then another 15 or so to build, you know, the golf course. So that's like 20, 30, we're talking 45,000 bucks, you know, throw in a couple of grand for sups and kayaks, um, you know, probably, and then I need another probably 20 to 25 to 30 inside the house to finish out some uh, bedrooms and some furnishings and that type of stuff. I'm at 85, 90,000 bucks I'll be putting into this property. So I got it at 750. If I'm 160 to close and I put 90,000 in, I'm a quarter of a million dollars into this. But if I can do 200,000, you know, I'm going to be looking probably at about a $95,000, uh, 90,000 to $100,000 net uh, cash flow off of this property. Let's just say it's 90, right? So 90 times two is 180. So that's 24 months, right? Then let's divide that 90 by 12 you know, gonna roughly be looking, let's just call it 7,000. So I'm gonna probably be roughly around a 26 to 27 month, uh, you know, 100% cash return. So my cash on cash is gonna be above 30%.
Those are numbers that I like. And I also like it when it goes with the cash flow. That's the hardest part is to be able to find something that can yield 25, 30% plus in cash on cash, but also have good cash flow. I'm looking for six figures in cash flow. Um, and it doesn't matter to me if it, if this would have been 20% or 22% or even 18 or 19%. If I can, if I can invest, you know, 150 to close and another hundred, you know, into renovation. And I look at that long-term investment specifically as the bourbon trail uh, grows. And then the other thing that I look at, you have to factor in your marketing strategy. So I do email uh, my past guests and I get direct bookings by doing that. I do use my past guests and create custom audiences in Facebook. And literally when I go back, if I know, when, once I know 100% I'm closing on this property, and I might even shoot a couple of videos just on my phone while I'm there to send to my guests as a sneak peek. So I'm gonna seed this information to my guests that have stayed at the beach, that have stayed at North Carolina, that have stayed at my lake houses, that have stayed at my mountain properties, all this different type of stuff, and say, hey, this is coming. Have you ever thought about going to the Bourbon Trail? Do you have horses, Tom Hausnick? You know, your kids would love this property. Here's what I'm gonna do to it. And then I will list this thing as quickly as I can, and I will get some, some photos and I will show them what is going to be coming. So seeding and how we're going to market is really what's going to move the needle for this. This is not buy it, put it on Airbnb, put it on Verbo and, call, and hook up price labs and call it a day. If you do that, this is probably 140 to $150,000 a year property. If you kind of follow the whole plan that I'm going through, then you can do $200,000 plus. That's what I want to impact your investing strategy, Tony. This is the type of stuff that I try to teach people every single day. Some people think I'm fucking crazy. Uh, some people, you know, think that, oh, that's, you know, snake oil. Other people get it. And the ones that get it, that understand we are in a business when we buy a property and that it's all the, the he who markets their property the best wins. Now, you don't want to misrepresent. You don't want to create ET syndrome, any of that type of stuff. But there's a lot of draws here. Compression events, horses, bourbon, Golf. Oh, I forgot to tell everybody there's like a 2 million square foot Ford battery factory, like 30 minutes away, like 15,000 employees. It's going to open in 2025. The rider, what Tony, what'd you say? Oh, PGA championships back at Valhalla. Valhalla is like an hour away. Every hotel in Louisville is going to be sold out. Every Airbnb is going to be sold out. This is the type of place that, you know, tour players will get two or three of them to come and stay and then literally have somebody drive them up you know, into the stuff. There's a lot of things, um, you know, that create, as I talk about stacking from a marketing standpoint. Um, do you do a camera inspection of all the plumbing uh, before you do a home inspection? Um, I've never done a camera inspection unless, and I've never bought a historical property. So the answer to that would be no, Dave, I've never done that. Um, there really are not any comps in, in your area offering anything like the comps. Uh, are you planning without comps? How do you get comfortable with revenue projections being uh, far above competitors. Dan, that's just based on experience and knowing what I can do. Um, the only way you're going to find real comps in that market uh, is to be really close friends with Kenny Bedwell, who can actually pull those comps that we can't see as just a standard SDR uh, Insights user or Air Airbnb or AirDNA or something like that. Uh, lots of fun ahead. Great to have everything conservative since you have a lot of room for massive value. I agree. How can I pay you or your wife to redesign and add value to my properties and or manage them? Uh, you guys are incredible. Uh, thank you, Tani. I appreciate it. Um, you can you can message me, Tani. I'm happy to figure out a way to be able to help you. If we can't do it, um, I mean, if I can't co-host it for you, I've got uh, I've got about six or seven of the best co-hosts in the country that I can refer you to. Uh, my wife is finishing up a, uh, a design, so she could probably help you. She'll have an open spot here uh, to help with some design as well. Um, let's see, will you borrow more than the purchase price to do all this work or are you paying cash uh, for this? Um, one, I don't have enough cash, uh, to pay cash for this. I'm not that wealthy. I actually could pay cash for this. Um, but it's not something that I would ever do. Uh, I will put 20% down and then I will put the rest in cash. Um, and it's all has to do with my life plan. Um, one, I wouldn't pay cash and two, I don't want to borrow that extra money because I do have the cash to be able to do it. Uh, and I will get it back so fast. I don't want to pay interest on it. Um, I am actually moving my debt down as opposed to leveraging 
Um, and it's interesting you bring this up because we just launched the accelerator last week and that's the first module is building out your life plan and your investing plan and your retirement plan together. Um, and like mine is vastly different than somebody that might be 30 years old and rightfully so. So I'm trying to eliminate, um, you know, work. I'm trying to eliminate uh, time that I spend and I'm trying to eliminate debt. Um, and really the reason that I'm purchasing, purchasing this is because All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, having bad fiber connection right now. Um, so the only reason that I'm buying this property and adding it, to be honest with you, and why I wasn't looking is because I decided to sell my least performing property, um, which is in Beach Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, so literally, I went under contract with that the same day that uh, I put this under contract. I started looking at this first. It was such a great deal. Once I saw the uniqueness of the property, I would have bought it anyways. And they are not contingent upon each other. Um, but, um, this is just something that I couldn't pass up. It fits perfectly into, uh, my sweet spot and it will be, it's only two and a half hours away from my property. So now I'll have two properties within a two and a half hour drive, which I do like, not that it changes the way that I host it all, but secretly there is a little bit of biasness and, and, you know, lifestyle purchase here. And my wife knows it, even though we haven't discussed it. And it's that lake. I've always wanted to have a lake, uh, on my own property to where I can go in um, you know, and stock it and, you know, have my own private place to be able to go and fish. Um, the property does have high speed internet, Anthony. Um, there really are no, yeah, address the comps since distilleries are dog friendly. It's a huge plan. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, Tony was talking about when I was there, uh, that, uh, you know, most of the distilleries are dog friendly, but they are not teenager friendly. So you cannot get anybody under the age of, <coughs> excuse me, 18 into a distillery, but you can take pets or dogs with you. A lot of restaurants in Lexington are dog friendly as well. Uh, a lot welcome dogs. Yeah, we're seeing that here too. Um, are bachelorette themed places a good idea? I think that depends on what on the, uh, the market, Mike. I mean, Nashville is the the number one bachelorette destination in the world. It overtook Vegas a few years ago. So yes, there's a lot of properties in downtown Nashville that are bachelorette themed. I don't know that I would make that. I don't know that I would go to that distinction because what happens when you do a bachelorette themed party? You're really excluding males, right? And even, you know, if it's to the extreme, most guys w don't even want to go there with their, their wife or their girlfriend or whatever it is. So you got to, you want to be broad. It's one of the reasons I don't invest into downtown Nashville. One, politics, but two, I don't want glitter bombs and sex toys and all that type of stuff uh, left all over the house. But you can do bachelorette party theming. Um, you just need to really make sure that you're going to be able to generate enough revenue. I don't know that I personally would do it anywhere outside of uh, Las Vegas or downtown Nashville. Uh, Louisville and Lexington see bachelorette parties, uh, not so much outside of there. Thankfully, does the property have high speed internet? Yes. Uh, it has high speed. Have you considered a runway landing, uh, for private planes? No, uh, Jeffrey, I have not, I don't, there's not enough land. I mean, it's 6.88 acres in the topography and just where the, the structures are there, there's no way, uh, that you could make that happen. Uh, but great idea. I would have to think about that because that's something that I strive for. My wife says, I've wanted to get my pilot's license for about the last five or six years. And she said, you can go ahead and get it. But, you know, the girls and I are never flying with you. So it's it's because a lot of my places are like seven, eight, nine hour drives away. I could fly there in like an hour and a half, uh, which would make it a very, very handy. I would love to have a private airstrip to be able to do that. So um, thank you guys for joining me on this Superhost Sunday. Um, I know it's longer than it normally is. Usually this is just like 10 to 15 minutes. I appreciate all of your guys' questions. Um, oh wait, hold on. I see one. I want to make sure I get everybody's. Uh, Tracy, do you have an exclusive direct booking <clears throat> strategy? I don't know what you mean by exclusive direct booking strategy. Um, I share all my stuff in my Superhost library, my academy free, like this type of stuff. Um, I do, one of the big things is really direct bookings that we teach inside of the, the host Academy. Um, and it's something that I really want all of you guys to, I want to make it easier for you to market. Um, and May 1st, you guys will see market my STR. It's the first all in one marketing software that's going to hit our agency. I've uh, been fortunate enough to white label, um, uh, the same all in one marketing software that Grant Cardone's using for his team and his, uh, coaches and. I'm going to make it available to you guys. We're beta testing it through my mastermind and my host academy and accelerator members. 
uh, right now and you'll have email marketing, text messaging, web hosting, sales page funnels, um, you know, everything that you could imagine for $97 is what we're uh, a month is what we're opening it up for. It's the regular price is like 200 bucks. I used to be a HubSpot customer and I was paying almost $4,000 a month. Uh, and it's easy. And I'm putting templates like your direct booking templates and email templates, what to send to your guests and social media templates. So I just want to ever, I want everybody to, to be set up and ready to be able to go. And, and it's all under one roof to where you don't have to, you know, pay, you know, $50 a month for MailChimp and $45 a month for lead pages or web hosting and $60 a month for text messaging and just all this type of stuff. And everything communicates together with the data. And then, you know, somebody, but you get, you get a stay fi, uh, you know, people sign up for stay fi at your property, use Zapier, Zaps, zaps it right into our system. And then you have a funnel of a combination of emails and texts and all this stuff to go out. Um, it's going to be pretty amazing. It's what I use. And now I'm bringing it to you guys on May 1st publicly. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Bill, how do you advise SDR owners on how to access their property management companies on their marketing strategy? So uh, there's nothing you can do, Anthony, they're not going to do anything. It's really the reason when I bought my first, uh, Gulf, uh, Shores property, I had the agent's property management company who was the largest in the neighborhood that I invested into. And about two months in when I had no bookings and I saw what I was getting and it was like 50% less than everybody else. I said, what the fuck are you guys doing? What are you doing from a marketing? Can I see the marketing plan? No, we, we don't share that with our homeowners. What are you guys doing? Can you tell me, are you doing search engine optimization? Because, and I, and I was an SEO, I owned a marketing agency. They didn't know that. And they said, oh yeah, you're ranked on the first page of Google. Well, their marketing, uh, company their or their management company was ranked on the first page of Google for Fort Morgan rentals. My property wasn't they at the time they had like 100 rentals, right? So they didn't know how to do Facebook ads. They weren't weren't doing any Google ads. They weren't they didn't I mean, they didn't even have social media accounts at that point. They weren't doing shit. That's the problem. And even the ones that do don't know how to do it. And if they do know how to do it, they're marketing their company, they're not marketing our marketing our individual properties. So the biggest piece of advice that I would give to you, Anthony, is get away from your property management company. Um, at the very least, I mean, I'm on a mission to, to empower everybody to be able to self-host and, and achieve numbers that, that I achieve. Uh, but at the very least, get a really strong co-host that actually gives a shit and is actually going to spend the time uh, to do the marketing. I mean, I've got Sheila's in here. Hey, Sheila, how are you? Uh, you know, that I'll refer you to who's a, a great co-host, depending on where you're at and you know, Kim and all these people in my mastermind, and you know, that I've been able to have an impact on and they're elevating their skills to where you actually get marketing, you get pricing strategies. It's not just list it and set it and forget it. That's, there's a, the property management companies are there to manage your property. They're there to fix shit when something breaks. They're not there to optimize your revenue or optimize your profit. They're there to build, you know, their companies at scale and get as many properties as they can doing nothing All right, looks like I had one more uh, one more issue with my AT&T fiber coming in here, uh, unfortunately. So uh, anyways, I would try to get away from the property management company, self-host, go through my library. It's very cheap. Learn the skills. Um, you know, just do it on your own. Uh, and if you have any questions, just shoot me a PM. I'm happy to help you guys, you know, as much as I can. Um, and that's it. I got to go to a soccer game. Thank you guys for joining me on Superhost Sunday. I really appreciate it. While you're here, if you'd hit the subscribe button, uh, that would mean the world to me. Um, I'm actually trying to build up my YouTube channel. Uh, these comments have helped. There's no question. Um, and we'll do it again next week. I just don't know what channel uh, it's going to be on next week. But I got to get to my daughter's soccer game. Thank you once again. Have a great weekend and happy hosting, everybody.